So, as I told you earlier, the chakras tend to develop from the bottom chakra upwards. And um, this development goes through several phases of our lives. And also the things actually from our previous lifetimes will also manifest themselves this way. We tend to use the first part of our life to repeat actually a lot of our life's past in the previous incarnations. So if you've had a very easy lives in the past, you'll probably have a very easy childhood. If you had very difficult lives in the past, it will also be repeated by difficult childhood. The reason for this is that in a way you want to access the knowledge and the experiences you had in your previous lives and to reintegrate them in your current in incarnation. So for instance, if due to your previous incarnations, you have a lot of positivity and uh, joy in you and uh, good energy in you, then by having pleasant experiences in your youth, you're in a way able to take all these positive energies and positive experiences from your previous incarnations and to mold them into your current incarnation. And in the same way, if you've had many challenges in the past and you want to bring your knowledge and experience with you into this life, you often symbolically repeat your previous lives by having problems and difficulties in this life. It is a little bit difficult sometimes for parents to hear that um, their child wishes to have some problems or some struggles at a certain point in their lives. But there's also very little you can do about it. Because the chakras themselves will start attracting certain events or certain people. And um, you can say like, oh, but I want to be a good parent. But a good parent can also mean listening to your child, giving them what they're asking for. And allowing them maybe to trigger your anger or your sadness or your frustration. Because this might be the experiences they're looking for. And it doesn't mean you have to do it all the time. Because usually it is more of a trigger. By just doing something two or three times, the energies from the past life can flow into the current incarnation and the person can start to work with them. So, and this is also the reason why even if something happens only once and it's not very dramatic, for the person it can be a very big dramatic experience because there's a lot of power behind that experience being unlocked by that experience from the previous incarnation. So for all these things to happen, for the lessons and powers of the past life to come forward, the first chakra, the base chakra, needs to function well. What the base chakra does it actually harnesses the energies in the upper legs and in the pelvic area and allows them to flow upward through the prana tube. And every talent you have, every potential you have is within these upper legs. Also your whole personality, your courage, your fear, your intelligence, they all exist as energy patterns in the upper legs. And Slowly but surely as your life moves on, these energy patterns move out of the pelvic area and the upper legs and start to manifest themselves in the higher chakras. But if for some reason the first chakra, the base chakra, is not functioning well, then the person can also not access their knowledge, their talents from their previous lives. And they lose a little bit their foundation. And they cannot also progress. All the things they wanted to work upon uh, are also stored in the upper legs. So they cannot find new projects to work on. So often a problem with the first chakra will manifest itself as quite a strong depression, uh, a lack of life force, um, often also a lack of stability and uh, even alienation can occur that a person is unable to realize who they are anymore or what relationship they have to the world anymore. The 
the problems with the first chakra often go along a little bit with having many incarnations. So the first two chakras tend to be very strong in people who've had very few incarnations, who are in a way just starting to explore humanity and want to develop their humanity. But with people who've had like 40 or more incarnations, often they feel they've already tried many things. They've been a man, they've been a woman, um, they've been many things, they've experienced so many things, so they're not so interested in developing their humanity anymore. And as a reason, the first and the second chakra tend to suffer from it, they tend to weaken. And uh, people with many inclinations tend to have problems more often, so their willpower tends to be weaker, their life force tends to be weaker, their grounding tends to be weaker, their identification with the body tends to be weaker. So all these are things which unfortunately happen when the first chakra becomes less strong. Um, so there's always a challenge, always a weakest point. So for a person who's just learning to be human, they're often very still, very animalistic in nature. They have no sense of morality, they have no sense of compassion. They have very little understanding, very little wisdom. So for they will have a very strong life force, it's their very strong identification, but the higher chakras will have less energy. And the opposite is true for people who've had many incarnations. And ultimately there is a limit to the amount of energy which is available. And it's a zero-sum game, so if you have a lot of energy here you will have less there, and if you have a lot of energy down here you will have less energy there. And over lifetimes people can develop a stronger energy body, but usually the growth in energy doesn't keep pace with the shift in energy. And uh, these are really the two problems if you start working with chakras. One is the total amount of energy available. Can that be increased? Is that enough? And also the distribution of the energy. Is it balanced enough so the person can function in a healthy way, in a healthy manner? Because it can become very frustrating. The person who has had many incarnations may have brilliant insights, a great amount of wisdom. But when the first two chakras are very weak, they are also hopelessly depressed. Uh, cannot take care of themselves, cannot feed themselves. And um, yeah, they will basically are unable to uh, to manage even though they have a lot of desire and will to change the world on a much higher level but they don't have the ability to support themselves so in some cases other people can show up to offer that support so to stabilize the person but ideally a person should be able to take care of themselves and of course they will benefit from support and by being supported in an area will free up energies which they can spend on other areas of their lives. So support can be a very good thing, a very beneficial thing, allowing a person to focus on their strength and instead of having to waste a lot of energy with compensating for their weaknesses. So the amount of energy and intention which goes into working with a weak point is a lot more uh, for the results than using your strong points. So humans are in a way um, social beings and we tend to function best if we have indeed a group where other people can compensate our weak points and we can focus on our strong points. It doesn't mean we should not listen or we should not learn from our weak points because we're also here to work on ourselves, to purify ourselves, not just to enjoy our strength, but also to accept our weakness and to try to transform it into a strength by experience. But we also have to remember that as we focus on one point and strengthen that, other points will weaken. But if we have healthy patterns for all of them, we can switch quite easily we can adapt more easily to the situation because we don't have to invent something 
from scratch, but we have an old pattern we can back in can get back into. And accessing these old patterns is really what the first chakra is about. So also when we sleep, we tend to go back into the first chakra, finding out what powers want to awaken, what powers want to grow, um, what messages in a way there are from our past lives, from our ancestors and from our power animals. Um, our first chakra also allows us to find places and people uh, we know from our previous incarnations. So the first chakra in a way has a complete blueprint of our being and in the same way as the, the crown chakra holds a blueprint to our future, the first chakra holds a blueprint to our entire past. And if we put these two blueprints together, we can have a very successful life. So the prana tube should be clear enough to allow a communication, a blending of the impulses coming from the first chakra and the impulses coming from the second, uh, seventh chakra. And this way we can have a complete understanding, a complete wisdom of what to do. But generally one or the other will be dominant and um, very often also the seventh chakra will tend to be a little bit blocked because the chakras in between tend to get very distracted um, with impulses coming from around us rather than coming from higher dimensions. And this is why meditation and solitude are very important so that we can focus again and listen to our inner voice and also listen to the support we're receiving from the higher worlds. The problems with the first chakra often relate to a person not wanting to incarnate anymore or being worried about their incarnation. It can be that the life they're going into is a rather heavy life because they have a lot of karma to work out or to work through and that halfway they get cold feet. First they think they can deal with it, they can manage, and then they realize that it will be very difficult and then they want to in a way abort the mission and but then they're already yeah half connected to the body. And this can be quite a bit of a struggle. And often a problem with the uh, first chakra will often manifest itself also in developmental problems for the person. Um, so if the spirit doesn't want to completely incarnate, then often the body itself will become handicapped or limited in some way, also to make the life more simple for that spirit, more easy for that spirit to deal with. And the challenges will exist on much lower, much simpler levels than they would otherwise. So uh, a limited uh, first chakra could for instance lead to a physical or a mental handicap and of course the person will have problems in their lives um, but they will be of less complexity than social problems or spiritual problems which they would otherwise encounter. And by having a life like this in working with problems and learning to get a stronger control over their emotional self, about their, over their psychological self, their physical self. They're also preparing themselves to have a very strong basis so that in the next life they can deal with more social problems, more spiritual problems and intellectual problems. So a troubled life is uh, often a preparation where you're building up experiences and strength to have a better foundation for the next incarnation. So it is not really possible to work very easily or well with chakras without thinking about at least the concept of reincarnation. Um, because many um, patterns are in a way flowing also uh, from human to human by having intimate contact with each other um, it is possible for talents, knowledge, um, 
to move from one energy body into another energy body. And by doing so, we're in a way teaching each other all the patterns we have built up. And I can build up patterns and then I can transfer them to another person, that person can transfer them and so onward. And I can die in the meanwhile and reincarnate and then get my own patterns back from having contact with a person a few generations later even. So we're in a way constantly storing all our capabilities, all our knowledge in the people around us. So humanity itself is like a huge library with all kinds of different powers, different talents. And this is also often the key to attraction. We're not so much attracted to the other person, but we're often looking for something we lost or we've forgotten in our journey through the different lives. And we often want to get that something back or we might want something new. And this is often the basis for attraction. And this energetic contact doesn't have to necessarily be also uh, physical or sexual intimacy. But by being very close and being very open to each other, you can really learn from each other. And also if I have a pattern, but it is, yeah, in a way, just an infant, just an egg, by being with a person who has the pattern very strong, very well developed, it will stimulate my pattern to grow and to blossom and to start to match the other person's pattern. So the chakras are very much about developing ourselves, about developing our personality and listening and feeding ourselves from our surroundings, but also giving to our environment, giving our patterns, giving our knowledge to the beings around us. And the beings around us are not just other humans, they can also be animals, they can be trees, they can be spirits. There's really no limit to what you can share using the chakras. It's just all knowledge on slightly different frequencies. And it is also not possible to share everything with everyone. Because that person might be unable to catch a certain frequency. In the same way also some animals have senses which in some ways surpass ours, but in some ways are also more limited. So animals also energetically um, live in a kind of a different world than we do. Some animals can hear sounds we cannot hear, or they can smell smells which are too faint for us. And it is the same with energies. Some of them can sense many different energies which are invisible to us, and sometimes we can sense energies which are invisible to them. But by cooperating with each other, we can get a more complete view of our cosmos. And by sharing our experiences, it also becomes possible for uh, an animal to take human form, because it will have enough experience from having contact with us to try and control the human form and the human body instead of that of, for instance, a dog or a cow. And in this way, by sharing, all beings can evolve and all beings get more flexibility. Um, it becomes more easy for the person to choose a new life form um, by having a lot of experience, a lot of contact in their lives. They can not just be humans, but they can also turn into chickens, into dogs, into cats, into elephants in their next incarnation. And in the same way we are making it easier for those animals we have a good contact with and whom we are teaching. Unfortunately the opposite is also true. Um, that if we are harming the creatures around us or keeping them from developing, then we are in a way also depriving ourselves of that knowledge, of that support. So, for instance, if I don't allow the pig to go out in the forest and to root around, but I keep him in a little cage where he never sees daylight until he's killed, um, that pig cannot share anything with me except its pain and its agony and its disappointment. Rather than being able to share its joy, its 
smell of truffles um, um, and all kinds of other experiences. So the quality of life, how far we are able to develop ourselves and, and how which degree we allow other beings to develop themselves, really also gives us support, gives us nourishment. The same way that an artist can often perform well if they're in an artist colony with other artists and they're stimulating each other, they're commenting on each other, working together on projects, then they can be much more productive than when you stick them in a cubicle uh, all by themselves without a window. Then the pe person starves. And this is also one of the problems of modern society. Because we become, just like in the movie Modern Times, just parts of the great economic machine. And this machine wants to be fed. And it is fed by our time, by our attention. And that means that we cannot spend our time or attention on self-development anymore. And because this doesn't happen just to one person but to many people, and now we are also exporting that to the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom, where also they don't have the same variety in life anymore, and not the same amount of challenges anymore. They have rather dull lives. And this way the amount of knowledge, the amount of stimulation available for the energy body tends to decrease. So this is why it is very important to spend some time in the wild, to spend some time in nature, to take time for yourself and to also give time of yourself to those around you. So you may stimulate them so that they in turn can stimulate all around them. So, I hope you understand a little bit more now of the great significance of the first chakra.